the grass in the front yard is starting to come up i can actually see it uh, it's all over the place i'll take a picture of it and uh, i'll post it as the uh the little picture for the beginning of the video on this uh on this video but uh if the grass is coming up real good i need to get these animals to the market depending on how much uh how wet my field is if this field is too wet out here on saturday i won't be able to take animals to the market but i've kind of been uh i've been working on my business plan i got a couple things coming up uh, this sunday i actually got a rental property uh it's about an hour away and the man uh and the man uh was talking to me about it. i'm gonna go i'm gonna go take a look at it uh he said he don't want anything for it he said he doesn't want uh, any money for it excuse me he does not want any money for it but he does need somebody out there farming it because uh He's telling me, well, I mean, I understand this too. If you got a piece of, if you just got a piece of raw land, this is what I'm talking about. You know, when I talked about, I was plowing up my field and then if I plow up my field and I just leave it for three months, it will turn right back into the wilderness again, right? I've already I said this in a previous video, but if you plow up a field, you are not permanently damaging the field. A lot of people don't know that. Um, if you plow up a field, and you leave it for like three months within three months it will have reverted right back to what it was and so the man's dealing with that uh, he's got a field out there and uh he uh, he had it excavated uh he had it uh bulldozed and he uh, he uh he burned a bunch of trees down and uh he said he left it for a few months and as of right now it's turning right back into the wilderness and he said it cost him four thousand dollars to just clear up the little portion that he did and uh, he doesn't want to be in a situation where he's just constantly having to dump money into his property. And so he said, uh, you know, I'm looking to I'm looking to get a farmer out here to, to start growing a, a crop on this field. And uh, and so uh, I, I was listening to what he was talking about. And I was like, you know what, I could go out there and I could plant a, uh, a hybrid perennial Bermuda grass. If I plant the Bermuda grass, Bermuda grass is a... Uh, it grows via rhizomes and stolons and so if you plant bermuda grass the plant will actually propagate itself the plant will spread across the ground on its own via roots and uh there there are below ground roots and above ground roots but they're called the uh, rhizomes and stolons and so you're going to find that if you plant the bermuda grass on a on a field the bermuda grass uh gets real thick uh, the bermuda grass comes in all over the place it spreads all over the place and you don't end up in a situation where you have a bunch of brush coming up because the Bermuda grass has already taken the soil over. And so uh, I was listening to what he was saying and I was like, you know, uh, could I make this work for me as well? I, under, you know, I know what he wants. And, uh, you know, could I work this, uh, you know, could I make something work? And I, and I wrote my plan out on a piece of paper and I was like, you know, uh, as of right now, under any circumstance, you know, I always say that there are times when you will have to pay no matter what, you will owe money. You will have to pay no matter what. You know, I say that all the time, right? And if I'm in a situation where I have to pay no matter what, you know, then I, you know, then, then that money is essentially already gone. And a good example of this is right now, under any circumstance, I will have to use about ten to $12,000 a year to purchase feed for these animals whether it be corn whether it be hay whether it be grain i have to it's going to cost me about ten thousand dollars a year under any circumstance if i'm going to run you know it could because you know like right now is a very good example of, of a time period where there is a where the, i just do not have the capacity right now to put these animals on grass right uh, the grass has been plowed up and it's uh, uh, you know i do not have uh, the grass to feed these animals and so i'm having to put them on a ration this will happen every single year you know practically i just need to I'm, i just anticipate that it will happen all the time you know into infinity and beyond there will be times when my grass is not growing or whatever and, and i don't have grass to feed the animals and now i have to put them on a total mixed ration right or i have to piss, put them on a put them on some kind of a mixed ration and so under any circumstance if i'm going to be in the cattle business especially like this if i'm running a you know five cattle an acre if i'm running five and i'll probably even i'm well, I'm in the process of going up to seven cattle an acre. I, I need to go up to 70. And uh, if I'm in that situation where I'm running five to seven cattle per acre, I will always have a situation where I need to have animal feed, right? And th that is not negotiable. There will always be a time when I need feed. And so I was like, you know, if I plant a, a, hybrid, uh, a hybrid perennial Bermuda grass on this man's field, and I was running the numbers and, uh, you know, it's about, a, he's, I think he was saying uh, it's somewhere between 30 and 40 acres of land. And uh, he uses it as a hunting retreat as well. And so uh, 
he goes out there and he hunts on it. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, but you know, he doesn't uh, run any, uh, but that, that's what he has it for. Uh, he goes out there and he hunts on it. And I was telling him, if I plant grass, you're going to get more deer. You know, you're going to get more deer out there too. And, uh, and so, uh, he seemed real happy about that as well. I told him, you know, if, if you plant real, real good quality grass out there, the deer are going to come. You will have a lot of deer on your property. You might actually want, you know, it would actually probably be good to put some extra pressure on the deer to keep them off of the field or they're just going to sit there on the field forever right i mean if it's a 40 acre field and you have a deer in the middle of it the field is literally so large that you can't even see the deer and so the deer is just going to be sitting out there forever and uh you know you probably want to push them off the field or they're just you know deer are like small cattle deer are like wild small cattle and so uh they'll, they'll sit there and they'll, they'll just sit there on the grass and eat the grass and but he uses it as a hunting retreat and i was like you know if i go out there and i plant the hybrid per, uh a hybrid perennial bermuda grass uh, the grass will spread on its own i don't have to worry about uh you know uh, seeding the feed uh, uh seeding the field real thick um uh, every spring it'll come back on its own and then it'll grow until the winter time and then by the winter time the the uh the grass will die and uh and I was running the numbers and I was like, uh, well, uh, for me to start up, if I was going to buy enough seed to, if I was going to buy enough seed to, uh, you know, put seed on 30 acres and I, and, uh, I ran the numbers at a hundred dollars an acre, that'd be about $3,000 for, uh, for, uh, for 300 acres or excuse me for 30 acres, that'd be about $3,000. And I'd probably have to put about, uh, about a 550, you know, because this field, I, you know, this field, uh, the numbers that I got, you know, I've been using my own numbers, right? Uh, because that's the thing about objective information, right? I've always said objective information is 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 essentially true across the broader plane of reality, and it does not matter if I'm 10% incorrect, right? If I think that it's you know like if, if my my numbers here, if I take a look at my field and I say uh, $550 for 10 acres, and I'm 10% incorrect, and it turns out to be 600. It does not matter that that's what i'm saying but what i don't want to be is in a situation where i think it's going to cost me 500 but it actually ends up costing me like five grand i don't want to be in that situation because if i'm in that situation the plan was horrible to begin with and so you know when i take a look at uh you know he's he's offering me about a 30 to 40 acre field and he said he don't want nothing for it but he said that it is a requirement that i well he did, i'm not gonna say he doesn't want nothing for it he does want something for it, but he, well, what he wants is somebody out there farming it. He says, I need somebody out here farming this. And so, uh, you know, um, you know, I said, that, that's, that's a pretty good opportunity for me. I ran the numbers and I was like, you know, uh, I could probably make about a, a net profit of about six to $7,000 a year on this thing. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I could probably, uh, you know, net a profit of six to $7,000 a year on this thing. Uh, and I was like, you know, and I'd only be working like uh, four to five days out of the year. I'd only be working about four days. But this is what I mean by growing hay. If you, you know, uh, you, when you're growing hay, you're at very, very, very minimal risk. I mean, the amount of risk that you are at, the the, the, the two grand, the $2,000 that you could possibly lose is not relevant. I'm telling you to forget about the $2,000. Don't even consider the $2,000 ever again. And this is what I mean by the money is irrelevant. You know, if you sit around and you go, oh my God, I don't, got, I don't have $2,000, I can't do this. You are, you are legitimately screwed forever. You cannot be saved under any circumstance. I'm telling you that that is the truth. You know, you have to get yourself out of that mindset. Don't sit around and go, I don't have two grand, I can't do this. You know, but this is what I'm talking about when I talk about, hey, you know, I'm talking about a 30, 40 acre field and it's gonna cost like 3,500 bucks. It's gonna cost like, you know, 30, 30, $3,500 was the, uh, the estimate and it is going to be plus or minus 10 percent correct and so if i go out there and you know and, uh, and i can make a six to seven thousand dollars a year if i can make six to seven thousand dollars a year and i only need to work four to five days out of the year that's like me getting paid a thousand dollars a day and so you know and i also come home with about 180 bales of hay a year and so uh you know but when i when i run everything together and i and i, and I uh, put all the costs together and I, you know, assign a value to the to the feed the value of the hay, and you know, I was like, you know, you know, my plan would not be to sell the hay, but you know, uh, because okay, here's the thing: is that if I grow the hay myself, I can produce a dairy quality hay. If I really wanted to, I know that with my skill level and what what I know about grass, 
I could produce a, a very, very, very high quality hay. I could, right? I mean, I, I know I could. It's not That's not really up for debate. Uh, you know, uh, I could grow a very, very, very high quality hay. And it's going to cost me about, uh, about the, you know, uh, well, to get started, I well, okay, this is what I figured. To get started, it's going to cost me about $3,500. But after that first year, because of the uh, the grass is perennial, if the grass is perennial, it will come back in the spring on its own, and then it will die in the winter every single year, essentially. And then about every five years or so, I will have to reseed the field because the, the hybrid Bermuda grass will eventually have just turned into a common Bermuda grass. And a common Bermuda grass, the, the biomass yield accumulation per acre is very low com uh, compared to a, a hybrid. You really want to grow hybrid grass. Hybrid grasses grow better. They accumulate biomasses at a much faster rate. Uh, you know that's the whole reason for plowing up a field. If you have a if you have a, a field just full of a weed grass, right? I mean, it's just grass that just blew in onto your field. It's like a it's like a it's like a weed rye grass. So that rye grass that 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 weed grass that is growing on your field is not going to be very good. The feed values are going to be very low. The biomass accumulation is going to be very low. It's not going to be very good, and that's why I plow. That's why you plow up the field and and you plant a, a hybrid winter wheat like I did, or 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 Sudan grass or pearl millet. That's the reason why you do it. You know, you don't just plow up a field to to plant grass just so that you can regrow the same grass. You, you're growing a grass that will genuinely accumulate biomass at like a two or three times of a pace. The hybrid grasses will accumulate biomass much faster than a grass that just blew in onto your field and it's some wild grass. You know, hybrid grasses will accumulate biomasses much faster. And so, uh, and I ran the numbers and I was like, you know, I think I can, you know, I, you know I'm just, uh, if I really take a look at the numbers, I think I you know, I would make about six to $7,000 a year on this thing. And I would only be working uh, four to five days out of the year. And uh, I could make about $1,000 a day. And so, uh, I was like, you know, that, that's that's good for me too, and uh, I don't. Uh, and now I not, I don't need to worry about uh, bringing in uh, any corn. I don't need to worry about buying some uh, some some uh, some pathetic hay from anybody. You know, I've, I've I've bought a lot of worthless hay, you know, in the past, and you know, uh, you know, uh, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff anymore. I can legitimately just go and do it myself, right? I can just go and grow the grass myself. I can bale the hay myself. And I can have about 180 bales of hay, and uh, you know, and I, and I would make about six to seven thousand dollars a year doing that, and I would only have to work uh, about four to five days out of the year, and I'd make about a thousand dollars a day. But this is what I'm talking about when I talk about hay, you know, and uh, when it comes to running cattle, and why I would highly suggest starting with the hay first is because when you grow hay, you are at very, very, very minimal risk. Per 10 acres, if you want to fertilize 10 acres, you know, very, very, very well, it's going to cost you about $550. If you want to plant seed on 10 acres, it's going to cost you about $100 per acre. And it's like, oh my God, you know, it's going to cost me uh, $2,000 to get a one crop. Let's say you have to fertilize the field twice and you have to seed it once to get one crop of hay. That's two grand. Does the, does the two grand really matter, right? I mean, the two grand does not matter. What matters is that you develop the skill sets that are required, that are necessary to operate this business. If you want to operate the cattle business, you are not just going to wake up one day, a mystical, magical creature. I fell out of heaven at seven. My life is a la-la land journey, and I'm going to run a cattle business that makes $15,000 a month. You won't be able to do it. You are going to need certain skill sets. And the skill sets will have to be profoundly developed. You will have to spend a lot of time working on your skill sets. And growing grass, if I did not have the capacity to grow grass, I would not be able to run this business. I mean, I would be able to run this business, but I would be horribly miserable. I mean, if I was in a situation where I was making $150 an animal, I would not run this business. I would just go and get a job. Because at the end of the year, if I was making $150 an animal, the, uh, the three grand a month or, or the, uh, the, the two grand a month that I can make, the $2,000 a month I can make, it would not be worth the time and the effort, right? I mean, if, I, if I'm making, you know, like a... But here's the thing, it's like if you look at me and you realize, oh my God, this guy is making $15,000 a month on a 10 acre field running cattle, and that is why I want to get into the cattle business, you're already off to the wrong start, you're going the wrong way. You know, if you look at me and you realize that I'm making $15,000 a month, and that is the reason that you want to get into cattle, but this cattle business, I'll probably end up making more than $15,000 a month on this 10 acre field. I probably will and about about half of that a little bit less than half of that is net profit and so if I bring home fifteen thousand dollars I really keep about seven grand 
And if you take a look at me and you go, oh man, I want to make $84,000 a year on a 10 acre field. I want to do that too. You know, you know, I want to go and do that too. You're, you're, you're already off to a beginning of a start that you are never going to make it legitimately because you know, you, I mean, you are mentally, that is not, that is, you know, the only thing, okay, here's the thing about me is that before I got here, right, before I got here, I was legitimately working on farming for like 14 years before I even got here. And so this is my 15th year. You are not going to be able to, I'm, I, I guarantee, and I don't like saying that, I don't like saying this, but I'm just going to be honest, because if I lied to you, that would not, you know, that would make me a, a morally wrong person if I lied to you. If I told everybody that you could wake up tomorrow and run this business as good as I do, if you could run this exact business, not even as good as I do, but you could do this exact business, and you could make yourself $15,000 a month like me, if I told you that, I would be lying. You cannot do it, not overnight. I mean, you are gonna need to, to profoundly develop your skill sets. I mean, if you cannot grow grass, you cannot run this business. If you cannot run a if you cannot you know run a business at all, you cannot run this business. The cattle is just one part of the whole thing. You know, I run a cat, I run cattle, I grow grass, and I run a business. It's it's a multi-dimensional situation. It's not just I just do this one thing and it, and it turns. Because here's the thing: is that if it was this easy, right? If if it was if it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. If everybody could wake up tomorrow and be like a world-class grass grower a world-class cattle person and a world-class business person, everybody would be doing. Who wouldn't want $90,000 a year, right? Who wouldn't want $90,000 a year? Almost, you know, 99.9999% of the population of the earth would want $90,000 a year. And so, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, I'm just gonna be straight up forward with y'all. There, there is legitimately zero reason for me to lie to you. If I told you that you were gonna make it, I would be lying to you and to myself because I do not believe that at all. It would be a miracle if one of you made it. And so, I mean, you know, but this is what I also mean by when I, when I say, uh, it's a very, you know, if I were gonna do this, uh, you know, if I were looking to get into this business, I will look into getting into the hay business first. Because if you get into the hay business, your cattle will be in your cattle business essentially will be entirely intertwined into your hay business. If your hay business fails, your cattle business will probably fail too. Because I'm just gonna be honest, like if I was making $100 an animal, okay, here's the thing is that if, if my margin was $100 an animal, if my margin was $200 an animal, if anything happened to the cattle market at all, like let's say corn prices went up and the feeder cattle market dropped, right? The overall commodity market for cattle dropped. You are now in a situation where you are having to work 15 hours a day every single day and you're still losing money. You know, if your margins are that razor thin, you are making 100 to $200 an animal, that is your plan. If anything happens to the cattle market that, that causes it to drop, you are now hemorrhaging money and you are still having to work 15 hours a day. That that is the reality of the situation. That is the reality that you know uh, that uh, I think a lot of people do not consider. If you have that small of a margin, if anything happens that affects your margin that is out of your control, you are you are in a situation where you are horribly miserable. I mean, you are going to get freaking wrecked financially. I mean, legitimately, it may be so bad that you lose everything forever. And so this is what I mean by when I get in, you know, if I were looking to get into the cattle business, I would get into the hay business first because you can grow a whole field of hay, a 10 acre field of hay, this whole field of hay, it'll cost you about, uh, you know, uh, if you were going to cut it for hay, it would cost you about, two, it would cost you about, uh, well, let's say $100 per acre or 10 acres, that's $1,000, $550, it costs you $2,100 and then you, uh, you fertilize it twice to get one real good crop of hay. It would cost you about $2,100 and, uh, you know, uh, 10 acres of hay, you're going to get about, uh, you're gonna, if, you, if you do real good on it and you grow a high biomass accumulation grass like a sorghum sedan grass, uh, you're going to get four to five bales an acre and you're going to get 40, 50 bales of hay. And if you sell each bale for uh, $60 a bale and you hire or you bring in somebody, a custom baler to... To, to bail the hay for you or you know they probably won't uh, number one they probably won't because uh, they, they're not going to show up for a 10 acre field uh, but you know you, you know you can essentially make your money back 
you can essentially make your money back. You might even be able to turn your $2,000 investment into a $500 net profit. And if you put $2,000 into something and you made $500, that's a 25% return on your money. And you've also developed a skill set. You've also worked on your skill set. So you've made money and improved your skill set. And that is what I mean by it is probably, I would highly suggest. And what I mean by what I highly suggest is if I could not grow the hay, if I could not grow the hay, the cattle business for me would fall apart. It would fall apart completely. I would not be able to run this business to a degree that it would be important to me. If my margins were raised within, I would not be running this business because if anything happened to the feeder cattle market that caused it to drop, the commodity markets fell for whatever reason, the economy turned over, the, the price of grain went high, there was a drought, the, the price of fertilizer skyrocketed because there's a, a, a war in the east something anything happened and it caused cattle prices to go up now you're screwed now you're holding on to something desperately that is going underwater and that you're hoping and praying that it works and you are you are legitimately holding on to something that is going underwater faster than 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 uh, anything that you can do to correct it and so you know i would highly suggest getting into the hay business first but i do have a uh i do have a uh I do have a rental property that I'm going to go and look at this Sunday. It's about an hour away, and my plan is to plant the perennial Bermuda grass on it, hybrid Bermuda grass on it, and uh, I think I can make about six, seven thousand dollars a year on it. But uh, the the big thing is that I now have a, a uh, if I do decide to go through with this thing, uh, I'm going to go and take a look at the property, and if it's worth my time, then uh, I'll go out there and then I'll get it done, and. Uh, I'll, I'll essentially have uh, you know a massive pile of hay and I don't need to buy corn anymore I don't need to buy grain anymore if I really want to or what, what which I probably will uh, you know because I you know if, if it's entirely up to me you know I always tell myself uh, you know one of the things about uh like uh well you know like if I do have the capacity to cut somebody out of my business and do better for myself then i will cut them out of my business and do better for myself like if i'm relying on somebody who is growing a pathetic quality hay if i'm relying on them and i realize that i can cut them out of my business and i can legitimately do it myself and do exponentially better and get paid more money then i'll go ahead and do it right it does not matter what it is it does not matter if it's hay it does not matter if it's cattle you know if i realize that somebody just sucks and uh, they are, you know, desperately holding on to me. Like, that's what I call crab pot syndrome, right? Uh, you know, they are desperately holding on. And, uh, you know, they're, they're holding on to something that's never going to work. And they're going underwater. They're more or less doing the exact same thing today that they were a year ago or 10 years ago. They haven't improved at all. They are essentially flatlined. They are not on an upwards trajectory. Even worse, they are going downhill, spiraling downwards. Then I will cut them out of my business and just go and, and take care of it myself. And here's the thing is that if I grow 30 acres of hay, uh, you know, I only got to plant it one time. I got to go out there maybe a four to five times a year to fertilize it and bale it. And if I go out there four to five times a year to fertilize and bale it, it's going to cost me, uh, well, I'll make about a $6,000 net profit on it a year. And if I make a $6,000 net profit on it a year and I only work five days out of the year, I'm making over, I'm making over a thousand dollars a day. And I'm coming home with very, very, very high quality hay. And so, uh, Yep. You know, and when I make these videos, I was going to mention this, but when I make these videos, you know, yesterday I was telling y'all, uh, a lot of you are in a situation where you believe that there was an island full of gold out there somewhere, right? And you believe that there's an island full of gold and all you have to do is make the swim. And all you have to do is make the swim. And if you, if you make the swim, there is an island full of gold out there. And what's, what's actually going to end up happening is that you're gonna end up lost in the middle of the ocean, right? And I'm, when I make these videos, and I'm like, uh, and, and I'm telling you, uh, it's better to think about the, uh, better to think about the world, or better to think about your situation as a mind full of gold. The gold is in the walls all around you, right? And when I make these videos, the best way to put me, uh, to put uh, an analogy on this, and is I am telling you that there is gold here. You know, I am legitimately trying to get you over here. I am like, there was gold over here. I am mining like $15,000 worth of gold every single month. Legitimately, I am farming $15,000 worth of gold every single month. 
and you are legitimately just you have believed you have convinced yourself that there was a, a an island full of gold somewhere out in the middle of the ocean and i am legitimately right here telling you the gold is right here i am farming 15 you know i am harvesting fifteen thousand dollars worth of gold every single month and you are you know ignoring this completely and swimming for some island of gold out in the middle of the ocean and you're never going to be seen again. I mean, you are legitimately just going to die out there in the ocean. You are going to get lost. And I am telling you that the gold is right here. I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately pulling 15,000. There, there is so much gold that I can't even pull all of it. You know, I've always said if I succeed and you succeed, then we have both succeeded. I'm not, you know, in a situation where I have taken the success away from you. If you succeed and I succeed, then we have both succeeded, right? Success is like the, the light of a candle. If I if I if if I if I have a candle full, if I have a candle light, uh, you know, a, a, a lighted candle, and I and I light another candle with it, it didn't do anything to my candle, right? It didn't do anything to my flame. I just passed the light on, and the light can be spread infinitely, right? I am telling you the gold is right here. You know, do not go swimming off into the middle of the ocean by yourself thinking that there's a, an island full of gold out in the middle of the ocean and all you have to do is make the swim. Because ultimately what's probably happening with that mindset is that you think you can get something for nothing. You don't think you you think that you don't you don't want to mine the gold out the walls yourself, right? You think that if you just make the swim, then you will land on this magical island full of gold and then you don't have to work anymore, right? Oh, I don't have to put in the effort anymore. I don't have to go and do anything anymore. I can just sit on this island full of gold because I made the swim. But that's wrong. I mean, I'm telling you, you're going to have to mine the gold from the very beginning. And the gold is right here. I am mining $15,000 worth of gold every single month. You know, because if you go out and you and, and you go swimming off into the ocean and you have convinced yourself that there was an island full of gold out there somewhere, you are going to get lost in the ocean. Nobody's going to be able to save you. And you're and you're you're going to be out there and you're going to flail until you until you drown. And then, you know, when, when the apple juice, when the apple juice mindset kicks in, you are just going to start flailing and then you're going to flail until you drown and then die. Old age, essentially. That's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.